Hey YouTube, JP Dillon. Today we're going to look at this sad specimen of a TV. This is a 1986 Montgomery Ward. Sure does look a lot like a Hitachi though. And this is going to be model number GGD12305. As you can see, January 1986. This I picked up at a flea market for next to free and there's obvious evidence that it's been outside. You can see all the water staining, the horribly rusted up screws for the antenna and the coax, dirt and grime, uh, pretty freaking gross. I haven't even turned this thing on yet. It stinks. It smells like it's been sitting outdoors of mold and whatever else. So, without further ado, we're going to, uh, let's see, it says pull on volume, but it ain't pulling. <laughs> I might need to find another knob or get some needle nose to pull it up, turn it on. So, let's do that and then we'll see if it runs at all. All right. Tug, tug. I get high voltage. There we go. Wow, look at that. It's actually, actually working. It's definitely got a stronger blue gun than the rest of it, though. And we got some uh, retrace lines here for sure. I had a picture there for a second, now it doesn't want to do a whole lot. Auto color. And we definitely got a light to dark problem. There we go, that's a little better. Let's see what happens when we hook the generator up. Alright, so here's the generator hooked up. You can see we've got massive retrace line. The picture's pretty soft. It uh, definitely, even with the contrast cranked all the way up, that CRT is kind of dim. So I'm thinking this one's probably, probably done. picture is definitely skewed a little. Let's see if we have some resemblance of color here. Yeah, we do. Those pots are really touchy. Now we've either got a loss of drive to the CRT or uh, the screen controls are all messed up because that isn't supposed to be that way, but we do have color. The tin control doesn't do anything. Probably super dirty. Yeah, even with the brightness cranked all the way up, it just gets all fuzzy and distorted. This is what you call a uh, worn out. And we definitely have some tearing up here. This tuner needs to be cleaned pretty desperately. This thing's tired. All right, let's see what a full rainbow looks like. And we've got some uh, tearing issues up top here too. But it does work. Got the retrace we need to take care of. But we're on our way there. Uh, let's open this thing up. And let's see what we find inside. Well, as you can see, I was wrong. It's not a Hitachi. Uh, the picture tube is a gold star, also known today as LG. 
Uh, let's see now. Here's all your common warnings connected to one side of the line. Here's something interesting about the uh, cabinet. Mark Molded Plastics Incorporated, Henry, Tennessee. Man, uh, materials manufacturer Dow Chemical, part name front cover, molded December 10th, 1985, finish date. Eh, I can't really see that. Interesting, huh? So, no bad looking connections on the driver board. That looks good there. You've got your, uh, what looks like two drive controls there. And your screen controls here. Pretty filthy looking chassis. Sub brightness control pot there. Let's see if we can shed some light on this a little. Kind of filthy. Uh, and then we've got our flyback with the focus and screen controls. There's your power supply down there. And we definitely look like we've got some baked parts in here. Those capacitors look tired. That board's all nice and dark. That capacitor back there is pretty toasted looking. That's where we're at so far. And if we put it up on its face, let's see if I can do this successfully here. And let's take a look at the bottom side of that board. So in that area where all of those capacitors are, I definitely see some connections that are tearing loose up here. Overall for, I guess this is a gold star, I can't see any thing that would tell me otherwise. I just go by the CRT because Hitachi has their own stuff. And you got this separate sectioned off down here. Color and video processing here. And this is your sweep up here. High voltage, the sweep drive power supply. All right, so next thing we'll do is get out the ESR meter and see if I can confirm that those capacitors that look baked are in fact baked. All right, so all these ones that I've got marked in red here are ones that look toasted or in the power supply or something that would be common to fail. So uh, we're going to just kind of check them briefly and see if what I think about them is largely true. And let me see if I can position the camera better so that you can see the ESR meter when I check them. Alright, so this was the one closest to the heat sink. This is C443. Let's check here. Yep, my leads are good. So C443 is open. C442 is still good. Here's C212, which is in the video processing section. That's still good. Power supply cap 437. You're okay. Here's C336. That's, eh. I didn't test great. C327, that's still good. C334, that's still good. C238, that's kind of marginal. So 238, 336, they're tired. And 443, which is open. Uh, those need to be changed. All right, so 328 is a 33 at 16, which tests kind of poorly. 336 is a 47 at 16, kind of buried back there. And I can't really see what the value of that one is, that Schwana cap. It's at 250 volts, though, so it's probably our B-Boost capacitor, and it's very much open. So let me get some values together, and we'll swap these caps out. And while we're at it, we'll dust the chassis and clean the pots, and then we'll see if we can get any improvement out of it. All right, so I replaced some defective capacitors here. I also changed one more, which was a 6.8 microfarad at 200 volts. 
Uh, it tested okay, but it had that uh, shrunken jacket look, so I figured it was getting a little baked too. Cleaned up the solder work on the bottom, dusted the chassis a little as you can see. So now I think what we'll do is we'll clean all these pots and then uh, we'll see if we can uh, get a better picture and result on it. But for now it ain't looking too bad. So cleaning pots is boring. They're easy to get to on this one though. They're just all right here. So I'll just take my deox, my little extension straw and clean all those. And then maybe we'll uh, crack open the tuner and get some contact cleaner inside the tuner and just work that and uh, then see where we go from there. So one reason our knob won't stay on is that's something that's very common is you can see that the the shaft here is cracked and there's no more grip on the knob anymore. Now if you've got the a lot of space around it you can do the simple thing which is just put a little strap around it uh, like a piece of wire and twist it down until it pulls them together. But that doesn't always work. What I like to do is, is I like to squeeze it together with a pair of pliers as I take a soldering iron and fuse that crack together. And I'm, I need two hands to do it, so I'm not really going to be able to show you in great depth. Uh, but realistically, I just stick the iron in the crack, melt the plastic together, while, and then squeeze it with a pair of pliers while it cools and fuses back together. You can reinforce it with some epoxy if you'd like, but that's usually the best fix. So I think that's what I'm going to do with this one. So I take the tip of the soldering iron and I run it right through the crack to liquefy everything. And as you're liquefying it, it pushes plastic out to the sides, at which point you take the flat side of the iron and push the liquid plastic back into the ravine you just created and then while you're holding it together you know blow on it let it cool and dry and it fuses itself back together it's probably not the strongest thing in the world to do it with you can always reinforce it with a thin layer of epoxy but it will mean that we can put this back on the set and it will work so putting this back on the set it's got a nice snug fit and I can push it back on there and now it works correctly all right, so with our minor repairs, we got the pots all cleaned, the caps are placed, the chassis dusted, resoldering done, tuner cleaned. Let's see if this thing does anything different. Now I get some vertical roll because I cleaned the vertical pot. Alright. Well, our retrace appears to be gone at least. That's a good thing. No, no, it's not gone. It's just more faint. Yeah, let's see here. We still got that tearing. We've got a little bit of pie crust down in here. Wonder what that's about. But I do have color. And da -da -da -da. my tin control works now. That's always handy. The fourth, third, or fourth bar is supposed to be magenta. Yeah, whatever. Close enough. Got a good contrast. That brightened up the picture a little. So we definitely, that vertical, uh, or that, uh, that B-Boost filter definitely took care of some things. Uh, let's just do a simple crosshatch. Oh, it's not what I wanted. Okay, so here we're at, uh, this is where we're at right now. Let's turn the brightness all the way down and see if I can't rid ourselves of that retrace. And back here, 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 hey. 
Uh, let's see. What am I looking at? Can't really see what any of these do. Uh, it's lightened up a little. Okay, so red's in the center. Red, blue, and green. Okay, let's turn this off so I can see what I'm doing. And the bias does not change the retrace. It's slowly going away as it warms up, but that's still not really acceptable. Uh, hang on a second, let me grab the screw driver and let's adjust the screen control. Alright, so I'm going to get back here and adjust the screen control. And we're going to see if we can make those retraces go away. All right, so that's backed off. And if I turn the brightness up now, it's pretty dim. So let's do some setups if we can. Let's turn the brightness up to about mm, two-thirds the way, realistically. And let's turn up our red a little. Let's see if it'll go any higher. No. Did I just turn it down? Yes, I did. Alright, so there's our red. That's with the brightness all the way up. Let's turn it down to about two-thirds. And my red's almost maxed out. That doesn't surprise me. Okay, so we just have a red raster there. And let's fiddle with the green. I think this is the green, yep. And we're looking for that nice amber color. And then let's mess with the blue. And see if we can get blue. Okay, so there's a black and white, and with the brightness turned all the way up, we have that now. Turn the contrast up a little, alright. The focus looks a little soft in the middle, so let me grab the uh, screwdriver again. And it's going to get jerky, so brace yourselves. Let's see if I can adjust the focus here so it looks a little better. There we go. You can see scan lines now. Okay. Much better. You gotta remember, I'm trying to do this one handed, so forgive me if it's jerky. And okay, so now we've got a nice, sharp looking. We still got a little instability there. But again, from the last video, I wonder if the batteries in this are getting tired. So now all we have to do is deal with the fact that the picture's not level. The convergence looks just spot on. That's pretty cool. So in order to adjust the leveling here, we have to loosen that nut on the yoke and then rotate the yoke. And be real careful because sometimes manufacturers were stupid and they glued it on here. So I'm going to try to loosen this a little bit and see if we can't rock it. Oh, we have a visitor. Probably someone from uh, wherever I took this from. Anyway, alright, so with that loose, you want to grab here, not the coils obviously, and we're going to rotate it. Try to rotate it, it's pretty well stuck on there. Ugh. Yeah, it's pretty well stuck, but that's enough to make it look level in the picture at least. So that's good. So let's go ahead and tighten this back down. Just tight enough so that it doesn't move. Okay. Yeah, let's go back to our color bars.
this thing is getting twitchier the longer it stays on. Of course, there's only a five minute timer on this guy. All right. Well, this looks a whole hell of a lot better. I am much happier with this. I think the tearing is a function of the generator. Um, let's switch to the DTV box and see how much better it gets. So with the DTV box, actually it looks pretty good. Pretty bright picture too. Good contrast. Not very good DC restoration though. I noticed that the DC restoration on this is kind of crummy. No signal with my ghetto fabulous antenna here. Yes, no, maybe, something, anybody, Bueller? Uh, I hate digital. I'm on a plateau, literally in mid-city San, uh, San Diego, maybe 15 miles from the transmitter, line of sight. And this is what you get with digital unless you have a fancy antenna. Uh, but it's actually looking really good. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with it. Uh, let's see. Why do I only... Cool. Always fun stuff here. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Just want to get the antenna up a little bit higher. Nice bright colors. I guess the uh, dim fuzzy picture was a function of the B filters being bad. Because it does have a nice bright sharp picture now. Alright, we have a 4x3, and as you can see, the black and white looks perfect. Uh, what I am going to do now is see if I can adjust the vertical height, because it does seem like there's a lot of overscan there, which is that pot down there. And then you have sub brightness, AGC delay. We really don't need to mess with that all that much. So, again, bear with me. I'm going to tweak this thing. And we'll just look for the black bars here at the bottom. And it's going to come up like that. Let's just fill the screen. Just a little tiny bit of overscan. That's not bad. Ugh. Hands aren't steady this morning. Actually, really clean looking picture. Normally, Samsungs are kind of, or uh, Gold Stars are kind of cheapy. It's the company that killed Zenith. Yeah, let's see here. Colors look good. Really good. God, they're just cramming so much into digital now. And then they reduce the power so that you can't hardly get anything. Yeah, whatever. Not much on TV worth watching these days anyways. going to do the... It looks pretty good. It's got decent colors. It's sharp. I'm happy. So really the, next, the last thing for me to do is to clean the thing up. And I'm just going to get out the toothbrushes and paper towels and stuff like that. And get it all cleaned up because it looks good. Nice picture. Didn't think that was going to happen. Thought this one was going to be a nightmare. So, yeah. Let's clean it up. Alright, so here she is all cleaned up. You can see it turned out pretty good. Cabinet has a nice glossy finish now. The uh, faded black plastic actually looks fairly decent. There's still a couple of dings here and there, but... It otherwise turned out very nice. And we cleaned up the fake chrome on the knobs. Uh, the little aluminum grill was still soaked some tarnish, but it's okay. So if you're curious, lots of toothbrushes and goo gone. 
got rid of that nasty stuff on the back cover. Uh, the top, after I cleaned it with Windex, I polished it with Novus Number no. 2 plastic polish. Same with the chrome on the knobs, and the rest of it was just toothbrushes, Windex, and lots of paper towels. So, looks pretty good now, and it has an awesome picture. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to find this one a new home. So anyway, thanks for watching the video, guys. More stuff to come.